Detectives and welcome to my video for October. Now at the moment you're watching this I am not really here. I am in fact somewhere across England doing an event for my new book Death in the Spotlight. This is a book I'm so proud of and I am having a great time doing loads and loads of events for it so as many of you can meet me as possible. If you want to know where I currently am check my website calendar but I knew that while I was touring Death in the Spotlight I couldn't leave you alone without giving you some really good book recommendations for this month. So here for you are some of my very favourite books that are out at the moment, books that I think you should all go and read if you enjoy reading my books. And the first book that I have chosen this month is The Way Past Winter by Kieran Millwood Hargrave. Now this isn't the finished copy, you will actually find it in stores as a really gorgeous hardback in this lovely colour of green with a girl's figure in gold on the front, but if you look for The Way Past Winter, if you ask a bookseller for The Way Past Winter by Kieran Millwood Hargrave, you will not go far wrong. Now Kieran is a really fantastic author and a very nice person. All of her books are great. Her first book, The Girl of Ink and Stars, won the Waterstones Prize a few years ago. And her second book, The Island at the End of Everything, was also brilliant and I think I reviewed it on this vlog last year. This book is about a world where winter has taken hold and will not let go. There have been years and years and years of snow and ice, it's almost unbroken, and the people who live in this world are struggling to survive. This book follows three sisters whose brother at the beginning of the story is stolen by a very dangerous, very magical being. They have to make their way through the world, overcome obstacles, meet new people and go to new places in order to get their brother back and save their whole world from the ice that is engulfing it. It is beautifully written. Kieran is a fantastic writer. It's a really pacey story. I couldn't put it down. I was engrossed in it and I had to know what was going to happen next. I think this is her most accomplished book to date, which is saying something. The other two books were fantastic as well. And I am even more of a Kieran fan than I was before I read this book. I think this is going to be huge this Christmas. It's going to be a great book to give people because it's all about ice and snow, which I hear the UK is heading for it this year. And I would say this is for anyone 8 plus who loves reading and vivid magical worlds and exciting dangerous adventures. The next book I've chosen is P.G. Bell's The Train to Impossible Places. And this is its fantastic glittery cover. And on the back, is a blurb from me. I loved this book when I read it. I read it as a proof and I was so excited by it that I knew I wanted to give it a blurb on its final cover because this is one of I think the best children's books that I have read this year. It is about a girl called Susie who wakes up in the middle of the night, comes downstairs to find a train and a troll in the middle of her living room. Her parents are asleep, they seem to be caught in a slightly alternate universe, Susie is completely alone and she discovers that this train is very important. It's the train to impossible places that carries the post between all of the different worlds in Susie's universe. And through a variety of slight mishaps, Susie joins the train and starts traveling with it to all the impossible places it's going. And as she travels, she meets new friends and she discovers that the Impossible Universe has a lot of things dangerous and wrong about it that Susie needs to help solve. This is a very exciting story. It was another one that I could not put down. It just jumps to life and you want to keep reading it and following Susie's adventures. But the other thing I really love about it is how good P.G. Bell is at inventing new worlds. There are so many worlds that Susie and her friends visit in this book and they're all stunningly well imagined, really fascinating. You wish you could go visit them or sometimes you wish you never saw them in your life because they're terrifying. He's got a real knack for making up places and people that seem realistic but fascinating and I had an absolutely fantastic time reading this book. I know you will love it if you are 8+, plus, if you love adventure stories, if you love magic and mystery and excitement, this really is the story for you. I do think it's one of my favourite books this year and I can't wait for you all to read it. The next book I've chosen is also for 8+, plus, and it's another really beautiful book. 
It is The Lost Magician by Pierce Tordain. Now, Pierce is a really great writer. He wrote the last Wild series and he wrote There May Be a Castle, which I think I reviewed on this vlog a few years ago. If I didn't, I should have because it was wonderful, very, very well imagined, and it made me cry a lot. And this is his new book and I was very excited to read it. Pierce is a massive fan of the line The Witch in the Wardrobe, I am too, and I can tell because this book is really a reimagining of the line The Witch in the Wardrobe for a more modern audience. He clearly adores that story and he's paying it really great tribute in this book, but he's also putting a few changes into the story and making it his own. This book is about a group of children right after World War II who go to stay in a house in the country, and this house turns out to be the portal to a magic library, a library where there are the books that are read and the books that are unread, basically fiction and non-fiction, and fiction and non-fiction start having a war, and the children who have just survived World War II and do not ever want to go back to conflict are unfortunately swept up into this war and forced to be heroic and to save the day by finding the magician who is lost and who created the library many generations ago. It's another really exciting, really imaginative book. I love the way Pierce can make up places and make them seem so real. He's somebody else with a real imaginative talent. And I loved reading about all the places he has created in his mind in this book. I also really loved reading about the siblings. They seem like they have a really realistic relationship. I know a lot of families like the Hastings family in this book, and I thought that was really great. This is a perfect book if you love C.S. Lewis' Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe series, if you love books about magic and mystery, if you are a reader and you love stories and you can imagine yourself getting lost in a story, this is definitely the book for you. As I said, this is eight plus and it is for anyone who really enjoys magic and wonder. I love graphic novels. I think they're one of the most creative, most interesting, imaginative ways to tell a story, and I love reading about superheroes and people saving the world. There are, at the moment, a lot of really good tie-in novels written by really fantastic authors to some of the best ongoing graphic novel series there are. Uh, and I like them all, but for me there is one series that stands head and shoulders above the rest that just does the tie-in better than anyone else does, and that is Shannon and Dean Hale's tie-ins to the Squirrel Girl comics, the Squirrel Girl novels. I've already reviewed the first one earlier this year, so this is the follow-up. Normally I wouldn't review the second in a series as well, if I've already talked about the first, but I just had to because this book made me laugh more than I think anything else in the last three months. It is absolutely hilarious and an absolutely fantastic novel in its own right, as well as being an absolutely genius adaptation of a really good graphic novel series. These books take place before the Squirrel Girl graphic novels, in which Doreen Green Squirrel Girl is at university. In these books, she's not. She's only 14 and she's going to middle school. In this book, she is really struggling with what it means to be a superhero as well as a normal kid and how it affects her ability to make friends and be normal and have normal relationships, as well as being this incredible person who goes around saving the day and destroying evil forces that want to take over her town. The book starts when a new mall is announced in the town that Doreen lives in in New Jersey. It's a mall between two towns actually, and the other town is one that Doreen's town have a massive problem with. They have a bit of a rivalry. And it seems like the mall is a normal mall until it starts stirring up that rivalry and it starts making the people in the two towns argue and fight. And it seems like there might be some nefarious, dangerous forces behind those arguments. And Doreen and her best friend Anna Sophia have to work out who really is behind this mall and what they want to do to her town. Now, Doreen is a fantastic character. Her best squirrel friend Tippy Toe is also fabulous. I love them both, but I think for me the stand-up character in this series is somebody who Shannon and Dean Hill have added in, and that is Anna Sophia, uh, Doreen's best friend. She is such a cool sidekick. I don't even think she's really a sidekick. She's a real hero in her own right. She's a tech whiz. She wears a hearing aid, which is pretty cool. You don't normally see that 
in characters in books. I love Anna Sophia as a character. I love that they have put her into the book. And I love that Doreen in these stories has a human friend as well as a squirrel friend to hang out with and to talk through her problems with. This is just a fantastic book. It is so funny. It is so clever. It's so fast paced. You will love it if you love graphic novels. If you love stories about girls saving the day. If you love squirrels, you will love this book. Uh, this is for anyone eight plus. And finally, I always choose a book that I really enjoyed when I was younger or that's classic and that I think you'll enjoy as well. And this month, my choice was guided by the fact that it is Halloween, uh, which is of course a very spooky time, and also that two of my readers, Georgie and Lyra, both wrote to me asking me if I would put it in. Now this is the bad beginning of a very sad and tragic series of events about the Baudelaire orphans Klaus, Violet and Sonny who at the beginning of this story discover that their parents have been killed in a fire that has also destroyed their house. They are forced to seek refuge with the very unsuitable guardian Count Olaf who does not care about the children as much as he cares about their fortune. In fact it turns out that he is trying to kill them so that he can take their money and use it for himself. Now that is how this series begins and in each book there are 13 the children discover a new guardian who may be able to save them and also discover that Count Olaf is after them. This, you may know, has recently been turned into a really brilliant Netflix series that I have loved watching. I think it's fabulous. I love the books and I think the Netflix series does a great job of creating the same atmosphere that the books have, the same weird horror, weird gothic atmosphere that the books are full of. I love this book and I think you will too if you are 8 plus, if you love really horrible stories, if you love reading about terrible things that happen to really nice people, if you love imagining yourself as a tragic orphan, cast out, having to look after yourself and when all the adults are terrible, you will love this book. I think it's really funny and really clever and a really great way in to gothic fiction for younger readers. Thank you, Georgie and Lyra. And if any of you have any other ideas for stories that I could mention in future vlogs, please let me know in the comments or on my website. I love taking suggestions. This was a really smart and helpful one. So thank you guys. So that's all for me this month. I'll be back in November when I will get to tell you about all the books that I read while I was traveling to all my events this month. So I should have lots of stuff to tell you about. I hope you've had a really great month. I know I'm going to be really enjoying myself in October, visiting lots of places for Death in the Spotlight. And if you have read it, I hope you've enjoyed it. And I will see you in November.